hey what's up so in this video we'll look at the using mutation hook we usually use it for actually creating post put and patch and delete requests so i'm gonna use show you an example of doing that with this hook so this is our last state so we need to run it npm run dev run start for react and another terminal go to the pulex api and npm run this should run this app and this is the previous state that we have okay so the idea here I want here another button that when I click on it another like drawer will open and we can there save the data so first thing I'm gonna go to the drawer component in check UI I'm gonna just copy this and then go to the source at UI and add another folder called post adder and inside of it I will have the post adder.js component and index.js and here I'm gonna use this extension so R A C F P like this R A F C P just give you a spoiler plate and this just retain the same thing that they have and we need to also copy paste this they are using the use ref hook from react and we need to import all of these components i don't want to waste your time i will just copy paste all of these imports i think they should add you or i think they should add the documentation a place where you can just copy paste the imports but yeah maybe i'm just lazy but yeah, these are the stuff that we'll be using down here. And uh, let's just export this component here. So export from the post adder. So export the default, the default export as the post adder. And let's go to the app header. And you can just use or we can import it like anything else so add from UI and that's it which is very nice and I'm gonna put this next or yeah next to this component and if you go now post adder is not exported from at UI because you need to go to the index here and export everything from the post adder component and now this will work is the button and this will open this drawer we need to fix the style so the color scheme from teal I will remove this and here I will give it a purple purple color scheme and this is our form I think I wrote this wrong so purple yeah like this and then you have we need to have like two inputs one for the remember the, this let's just see the models so this is our post or each, this is how each post are, are structured so we have id body image archived or not full name slug i'll be just using the full name and the body to create a post i think it's uh, it's not even like beneficial for us to do everything and uh, the id will be auto generated in the api so that's something really nice handled by the json server package so uh, yeah to start let me import from the active query that I use mutation hook and const const I will destruct some stuff when we use mutation and it accepts a couple of arguments the first one is the mutation function this should retain a promise so I'm gonna retain the fetch or the, the retained promise from the fetch API and I'm gonna import from app constants the API URL I'm gonna inject that here then forward slash posts now to make this up an actual post request we need to specify the method this will be a post and we need to specify the data sorry the body of the request this should be a JSON string so remember JSONs are just strings a lot of people think that JSON are JavaScript uh, JSON is just a string actually if you hover over the stringify function you will see that converts a JavaScript value to JavaScript object mutation string. So JSON is just something inspired 
by JavaScript. It's a string format inspired by JavaScript objects. That's why actually, if some API returns uh, JSON, you need to parse it. And most of the frameworks or libraries we use actually do that behind the scenes. That's why we you, you rarely use this, but yeah. And the last thing we need to actually add the headers. So for this data to be saved that we will be sending at some point, we need to tell the API that this data is actually a JSON data. So content type, this will be application JSON. I'm gonna just copy it, copy paste it again to make sure I didn't type anything wrong. So yeah, now the data that will be sent, we will be using the use state hook from React. So const. This will be an object full name will be empty string and the body of the post will be also body empty string. Now this will be the state and this will be the set to state function. I'm gonna just stringify the state itself and send it as the body. And for this to actually like function, we need to add the full name and the body into the state. I'm gonna use this input and another one, which is the text area, which also exists in Chakra UI. So the placeholder here will be add the full name. Of course, in a realistic API, the full name might not be here. It could be, but maybe in another table and stuff like that, and you have relation. But let's just stick with that. Placeholder, this should be um, add, add the post body. So this guy actually go and check the UI. I think we need a margin here, and Chakra UI actually support these kind of stuff. We can actually do empty, which stands for margin top, or you can do margin top. But yeah, so yeah, as you can see, this is much better. So first thing, I'm gonna do value will be state dot full name, and on each change, this will actually or this callback, it will the actual event fired from this node or from the behind the scenes DOM element will actually be passed here. So let's say, let's call it E. And to get the value E dot target dot value, dot value. This is how you get the value from the input uh, on change event. I think you know that, but we can actually destruct. Then from the target object again, we can destruct using this column, the value. And this value will point to the same value here. So we can actually just do set the state, destruct the old state, and put full name will be equal to value and that's it and let's do the same thing for the body so the value will be state dot body and on the change we will change the body itself um yeah that's will be it yeah and now when we click save we need to send the request and or, or you can say we need to activate the mutation. So after you define your mutation like this, you can actually destruct the mutate async and the mutate function. Oops. Yeah, the mutate async and the mutate function from the use mutation return value. And when you call these, the mutation will actually be run. So the, two dif the difference between these two, that this one will not return anything. And this one will return a promise. So that's something, uh, maybe you want to do something after that. There is multiple ways actually, but let me just show you something. So on click, so I'm gonna call maybe the as mutate async, maybe I went, after this happens with no errors, I will execute something. So this is my success function. And uh, on catch, this is my error function. And finally, if, even if there is either like error or success, I will call my finally function. This is where, this is when finally will be called when this promise resolves no matter what uh, the value it no, no matter if the promise resolved or not finally callback function will always be called maybe you want this behavior but i will use the mutate and i will show you another way that we can actually achieve this above behavior without using the mutate async there is they give you a lot of ways so yeah this will be it so let's actually go open the inspect tab open the drawer let me minimize this Oops. Yeah. So 
So let's actually hit send and you will see. I think this is the option request, yeah. But this one, this is the data that we sent. This is the URL and this is the preview. This is the retained data. And if you go to our database, which is db.json, and scroll to the end, you'll see that this is the actual new data that we saved and it actually got written in the da database. So now some stuff that we you might want to do. The first thing is success. Maybe on success, you want to actually do something. And another thing uh, is, is, I think, is loading. So you might want to monitor these two things and maybe display a toast uh, with them. That's why I actually imported the use toast from Chat AI. So const toast will be equal to use toast. And let me import the use effect hook. So use effect hook, use effect hook has like many use cases. One of them is to monitor a value change. And based on that change, you will call some function. So, and you do this like uh, the following. So it's success. I'm going to monitor that. I'm going to put it in the array of dependencies. And if it's true, I'm going to call the toast with title uh, created. And yeah, with just title created and uh, duration of one second. I think the variant will be success. I think that's it. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me check here. Stat status, not variant. OK. And now, if it's loading, I'm going to monitor that as well. Maybe you can put these two here. I think it will work. So it's loading. And also check on that. So if it's loading, maybe you can split them. It will be the same. I'll do toast. This will be info. And this will be creating your post. And I won't actually hide it. So it will be there forever. And I will hide this when we have uh, when this success is a true. So I will do close all before actually opening the new one. So, so let's click, sorry, I keep clicking this button. So let's actually go to the open and let's do this. Save, so creating your post, create. Let's do it again, creating your post, create. So yeah, this is the, or this is a behavior that you might want to do. And another thing, so this is one way to do this. Another thing I'm going to comment this out is to use or to pass a configuration object to the new user mutation hook. So after you call back, you'll do this. So you have many configure, you have many callback functions you can actually define. First one is on success. Just give it a function, like an object like this, then on success. This function will actually be run on success, and uh, you can display the, the thing, the object that they gave you. If you want to see the data, the status, and stuff like that, and plus you can get the status from here. So everything, almost everything, you destruct from the user mutation return value. You can achieve by passing a callback function to it, and at the same time you can access the same value. You can access the status, you can access the data, so you can also access the data. So on success, I'm gonna do this. And yeah, another thing is when we can actually know that this is loading, on mutate. So on mutate will actually be called as soon as the this mutation will be run. So I'm gonna do this on mutation. I can actually delete this. Maybe I will leave it for you. But yeah, so this will actually be the same. So let's go here. Create your post. Now it's created. Another another time, it will be created. And remember, this is how you can get the data. You have the mutate async. You have many more actually features or stuff to destruct. Um, I really like this. It's really nice. I think, I think now this will be it. But there is something actually, as you can see, this notification, which actually happens each time we like. 
each time we uh, for some example if I do this as you can see each time we go outside the window and return to it this the previous data or the previous request will actually be run and as you can see this is the same one this is the page one and let's actually go here to VS code and let's return to the browser it will actually go and fetch it again and it will keep let's do it again yeah each time we go outside the window and return to it uh, this request will actually be fired again this is actually something by default in uh, this is actually something by default in react query each time the like the user go outside the window and return to it it will refetch the previous uh, requests so if you want to, if you want to disable this behavior i will show you how so you can do it in two ways first thing on the query level so let's go to the app header which we which where we define this query and we can pass another thing here called let me just check it out refetch and window focus so put it to false and now let's actually return here let's hit refresh this is the first request now let's do the same thing actually as you can see nothing will happen let's go to the vs code now return nothing will happen so you can disable this uh, on the query level this behavior and another thing you can do it i think on the uh on the query client at self level but not sure what to bit that let's just go get it together so yeah, you will do it like this so default options the queries refresh on window focus to force and that will give you the same thing but on all the user queries uh hooks Another thing to notice that in the dev tool for the active query mutations, let me show you, will actually not be there. And there is an actual valid reason for that. So user queries will cache the data from each query and it will be available globally to other hooks. So each time you call the same hooks for, for the same query from other places, it will retain the cache data and stuff like that. I already explained that and it will like, send an HTTP request to make sure that that is valid or not or it should actually update it or not um, so that's why every user query or every user query actually query will actually be cached here and the data itself will be cached and the status and stuff like that mutations on the other hand will not be cached because the data is not available globally yeah, react query will not cache it and uh, yeah that's the reason they won't actually put it in the div tool because it would be cached and uh, the information about it will not will not be available globally. Uh, I hope this is everything that I wanted to say. Let me just check the previous code. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. This is everything that I wanted to show you. I think, yeah.